continuation of our saga, Design in the Age of Experience, Design for Life. Uh, Philippe Lofer, I'm the CEO for the brand Katia, and I'm going to moderate, to animate this uh, session with uh, the gentleman on my left. Um, so the, the theme that we want to address today is the business value of design. Very important topic. We don't just design for uh, the comfort, for the beauty of, the, or for the, of a better life. There's also a business side on it. Um, we see that there, uh, strong design make a difference in the experiences we are living. I'll give you some examples. Um, the Google homepage, the Google homepage, when you go on it, there was, I would say, a tremendous design done on it and it generated substantial business. The other topic, maybe uh, more pra pragmatic even, is the Swiss Army knife, where everyone nearly has, has, a, has a, a product like this one. On the other side, if you look at uh, um, the Berlin airport, for example, of course, the non-design caused the failure of the business. So we want to relate today in this talk uh, how, to be, how to integrate design to be successful in business. That's the topic. So uh, I always ask my question, is there a magic potion? Is there a, <laughs> a story that we could tell to all of you to be successful? successful? And who is best uh, as our invite to, uh, invitee today? Uh, Gianluca Brignoli, do I pronounce it good? Yeah, perfect. Uh, your chief experience design in McKinsey. So let me give you a little bit background of Gianluca. First of all, the first thing he asked me to say is that he's a designer. He's not a businessman, but he's a designer first. He spent, in fact, uh, 12 years in Frog Design Office in Milano. So he knows what design is about. Uh, and, of course, you have 25 years total of expertise in user experience design, yep. in consumer experience design, and you will tell us about some uh, uh, winning digital products and services that you have designed yourself. And now uh, Gianluca is at the head of McKinsey Design in Milano, in the Milano team, and you advise top-tier companies on how to incorporate design thinking and uh, user insight into a business strategy. And by the way, I brought with me a little book that you gave me, yep. which is called The Business Value of Design. I guess you're gonna speak about that, but this is a Bible. <laughs> <laughs> you want one? <laughs> okay. um, so the sectors you're in are financial services, e-commerce, uh, consumer products, telecom, media, yep. and yep. fashion. Yeah, yeah. These are some. So Gianluca, tell us how to unlock the business value of design and boost the business performances to all the audience. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So um, so let's start with a um, little introduction. Okay, after this very short introduction, let's get to the topic. So good design is good business, right? So this is a very famous quote from the IBM CEO, uh, we, Thomas Watson. So we are in 1973. This, is a, this comes from a famous uh, speech he gave uh, in the Pennsylvania University. And uh, by the way, it's pretty, there, is, there is a little anecdote by that because Thomas Watson fall, fell in love with modern design when he was visiting an Olivetti store oh. in New York. So he said, so the, the, the store is fashionable, it's modern, colorful, and he said, why our, our, our product and our store are oh, gray yeah. and yeah. boring? Yeah. And so after, uh, after that, he built, uh, actually in the 70s, uh, um, uh, IBM invested a lot in building 
uh, a great design culture within the company. So you see, there was the time when computer looked like a giant washing machine, right? <laughs> so after the point today is after uh, 40, 45, 46 years from this sentence, the people and the companies are still struggling with this idea. Is design good design a good business? So uh, to, to get to, to, to provide an answer to these questions, actually, this is not the first time we're discussing about that. Uh, so design and business, they had over time um, um, a lot of, it's a kind of swinging relation. So, so, so sometimes they, they, they go together, sometimes they, they, they split is a continuous up and up and up and um, excuse me back and forth. Back and so now we are in the moment where design and business they are they are getting closer. Uh, but for example, if you go back in time, one of the most famous example is the Danish design ladder, which is basically a, is a is a tool invented by the Danish Design Center in order to assess the, the level of maturity our, mm -hmm. our companies are using design, and it was one of the first attempt to, in, in a way, assess and see the business value design. Then, of course, very, fa very, very popular also you have, the, you have the design council that is by, as a mission, by mandate, they, they are promoting the business value design and they were the fact, the first in trying to correlate the financial performance with the business value of design of some companies. And then you have one of the latest example that is the Design Management Institute. This is probably the one of the most uh, well known because it's simply one of the most recent. They, they did the same. So basically, they they prepared a portfolio with the most, let's say, design-driven design-led um, uh, companies, and they again they tried to to match this with the financial performances. So anyhow, so the. The reason today everybody's talking about the business value design is because today lots of companies they are buying design, design studios. So this is a slide from John Maida Design and Tech Report. It's actually the version of last year. Today he just re released a new version, but it's OK. So it shows in 10 years how many design agencies and studios have been acquired by other companies, right. which means that there is a growing appetite to have design inside the companies and there is a growing appetite for business consulting, system integrator, but also from banks, from uh, you know the most, uh, uh, of course, startups, tech startups to build their own design team. So today, today design is definitely within the company, within the business, and it's pretty interesting because when you, when you, if, if I'm also a teacher at a university here in Milan, and when you are a, a young graduated design student. 10 years ago, your, probably your dream job was to go and work for an agency, to a design agency, right? Mm -hmm. Today, most of the coolest job is to go and work for a company or work for a startup. It's no longer a design agency. For example, this picture, if you look at this picture, that looks probably, I don't know, what is this picture? Is this, I don't know, Google? Is this, uh, this is a bank. This is uh, Capital One in uh, San Francisco, and this is the, this, uh, the design the, 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 the design uh, department of Capital One. So you can see today, even working for a bank can be a cool job for a designer, right? So this explains a lot how many things are changing today. Many companies, especially the companies that are feeling the strong pressure of the digital revolution, they, 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 they know that they have to bring digital into, the, into their culture. And today, there is no way to build to create, to build a digital proposition without the designers, without exactly. design insights. So today design is really, really entrenched with the idea of delivering a good, digi a good uh, digital solution. Because it's not about technology, it's about the people. If you think about getting back to the example of the bank, so if the bank is no longer a branch, a place where you go and speak with someone, but the bank is an application that sits on your, on your mobile phone or on your tablet, you need a good designer to make it work and you need a good designer to have a good impact, right? The one so I have is not very good, I would say. Okay, then later you tell me. Probably <laughs> it's not a bank A design. I work a lot for banks. <laughs> so, and, uh, and the, so, and this is, this is the problem of the customer centricity. So, um, so uh, the, here the problem here, actually, from my point of view, and also this is the reason we are talking about this, uh, this research, is because the problem is not to, is the question is not 
does design have a business value? Of course, design has a business value. Everybody, everybody won't argue about that. The problem is how to unlock how it, to, mm -hmm. how to make it work. And so this is today a, a, a big open challenge for companies. So um, um, we, in our research, we found that this is a kind, there is a price. If you, if you get design right, you get a very good result. And shortly, we're going to see also the financial result. But the key problem today is really to, is really to realize this goal. And this is also the reason why if you go <laughs> in Amazon or whatever you want to go, there are hundreds and hundreds of books about how to yeah. get design well, how to blend design with strategy. So, so the topic is hot. You'll tell us which one to choose? Or? Excuse me? You'll tell us which one to choose? <laughs> which book? <laughs> I don't know. The, the problem of these books, they get old very quickly. Uh, <laughs> so the, you write a book and then after two, three years is, 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 is old, is it's obsolete. Outdated. So, for example, and now we start to talk about the research. So we did, uh, we did our research is based on interviews with companies. And for example, uh, we found out that, I don't know, 66% of companies today, they build prototype, which is good. Uh, absolutely, uh, is a, this is a best practice. But they don't, they don't, basically, they don't test it with users. They still use them to, for, for internal proposals to, to talk about technology, to talk about business. We found, that, for example, the companies, half of the company we met, they don't even speak with users before kicking off a project, which for me is, so they, they do, so their requirements, they simply come from technology or from some kind of business department. And of course, this is the most important point. Basically, almost everybody in the company that is not a designer is struggling to understand how to make a good call on a design decision. So, how can I do that and how can I make it work for my company? They have the feeling that they're not able to make the good calls. So on the base of that, we basically, we wanted to, to so the, the, the two answers we need to, the two points we need to answer is, okay, what is the business value of design? How we can assess the business value of design and what action my company can take to unlock the value? These are the two questions. So, so we, in a perfect McKinsey design style, we launched uh, um, a global research and we built the McKinsey Design Index. The McKinsey Design Index, of course, just a note how it was built. It was, it has been a pretty structured approach. So we built mm -hmm. a kind of scorecard about what is a design action that has an impact on design. A design action can be you appoint a, a chief design officer, you build a design team, you start to have internal departments, you start to have design tools in the company, you're investing in having design tools. These are all design, uh, we call them uh, design decisions. Of course, they have been scored because they have different impact and values. Then we built uh, the, so building all, uh, mapping all this scorecard, we've been able also to understand what is the, the, the score of the company and we try to correlate the McKinsey Design uh, Index with the, with the financial performances. So uh, the research is basically has been has been a lot of qualitative and also a lot of quantitative data. data. So we collected we is it has been um, we interviewed more than 300 companies. Half of the people we interviewed were in chief positions somewhere. Uh, 15 studios globally involved. And basically, we've been able to collect something like 2 million financial data and more than 100,000 uh, of these uh, design actions. So what have we learned from them, from this research and from this data? So the first point, and for me to you, OK, uh, we confirm. So we, we learned that um, uh, combining, so the best performance, the companies in the top quartile, they are, they are the companies that they really have in be, be, um, uh, better revenues and also they're able to create more, uh, more values for the, for the shareholders, okay? So and you, as, you, as you can see, it's really more than 50% 50, 50 and, no, and more than 50% of uh, revenues and so over a period of five, five years. So and then in, um, in, uh, in, uh, we also, the research was, um, uh, the research were um, a multi, uh, excuse me, what? Something wrong here, oh, sorry. The research was also a um, <laughs> uh, cross-section, cross-sector, so the research was not only a uh, traditional uh, sector where they used to work with design, for example, uh, consumer goods, but for example, we worked with healthcare companies, we, we worked, we interviewed with uh, banking and, and also and telcos, so we, we've been able to see that more or less these results they all through across different sectors and industries. And the, and the other point is that 
this is probably, probably the most interesting insight is that uh, the top performer the, is, is not a gradual, it's not a, a continuous improvement, but uh, only the top performer, only the best, only the one that they really get designed, they get, they get a disproportionate reward, uh, they get a, a lot of value. So as you can see also from, the, from this chart. So uh, now the question is how, so, okay, learning from the top performer, how can companies can make it work? So we know that design, so we proved that design has a strong business value. So from a point of view, one of the points to understand how to make it work, we need to understand how design creates value for company. And this is a very big topic because over the years, this value changed. In the beginning, it was building products. Then we started to talk about, you know, uh, brands and ecosystems. So, so creating consistent ecosystem and brands. This is uh, brown in the 70s, so it's not really new, right? Also in the 80s and the 90s, it was all about brands. It was all about ecosystems. Today is mostly about experiences mm -hmm. and um, and um, and you know and and uh, design thinking, and also it's about sustainability. So today. Design deliver values in many different ways, okay? So, and, um, and specifically, if we, if we keep our, if we, if keep, we, we close our focus on the customer centricity challenge, that is the biggest challenge for many companies, from a point of view, there are four ways. So design, design delivers business value, providing the best products and the best services, which is the reason why you have design, which is the reason why design exists. So we deliver good products. And from a point of view, this will never go away because this is really the, the, the core competence, the core reason with that. In doing that, now designers, they also enable companies to build the new uh, innovation processes. They, they bring new tools, for example, 3D systems where you can explore and... and, and Experience in advance. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So, and, and today, it's, this is what you get from, from a design team. Now, in, in, the, in more recent times, so you, we have a new, something new, for example, inside the metrics. So later, we're going to talk about uh, how design can be measured, but in general, designer they do research, they're able to provide a lot of qualitative insights about the customers, about the people, and about the experience they're working. And this is for me, this is a really an invaluable source of content. And the fourth, the fourth value, and from a point of view, this is a reason today design, is, a lot of companies, lots of people are really look, talking about the business value of design is because we get, design can help you to create new competences, to build new skills, and to change the culture of the organization. Because, because just business, just technology is not enough to deliver a good customer experience. You need to have a completely different set of skills, a completely different set of values that are typical of the design competence and, and typical of the design industry. So this is the reason from a point of view, companies today are bringing design in. The problem is, again, so you bring in design in, but it's, it's, always, a, it's always a challenge. So it's not something that, how you, how you can make it work. So how you can make it work, learning from the top performers, we built four key topics, four key stories that you can use in order to, in order to understand how to, what are the, the, key, the key selling points. So again, I'm sorry. <laughs> so it's the interaction between the phone and the, and, and, and the, and the, and the computer. The design of the experience needs to be yeah, yeah. polished. Yeah, yeah. So the first, the first point is that, the first point is, design is more than a feeling. I understand that is, is something that can be measured. I understand that is, is a very controversial topic today, but when this, if you assume that design can have a bis an impact on people, on customers, you can measure this impact. Also in terms of, I don't know, not only in revenues, but also in loyalty, in brand value, but also in terms of recurring clients, in terms of, um, uh, uh, excuse me, conversion rates, in terms of MPS, also in terms of uh, numbers of call to the, to, the, to the customer support that are declining or increasing. So this is, you can measure the impact of good design or the impact of bad design. So it's there, you can measure it and you can put a KPI on that. So design can be measured. The second point is that design is more than a department. So uh, the topic here is very important. So many companies, they, 
believe that design it. You just need a team uh, design team. You put them in a room you know, yeah. with a with some Mac, yeah, yeah mm -hmm. and, and you're done. So, so this is the way many companies, for example, they, they, they failed in creating uh, innovation centers because they basically they create a bubble outside of the company that is not within the organization. And, and, and it basically is not working. Design is something that it has to blend with the, in, in, with the rest of the company. It's cross-functional. So if it's only if it's cross-functional, it delivers value. Because designing is not able to deliver business value alone. It needs to be there with the rest of the company. The other point is design is more than a phase. Again, design is not just uh, the team that you involve in the project in the beginning and then when they have release something, they release this, and everything is done. Yeah. Actually, it's continuous iteration, especially in the, in the software industry where software is never done. So you need to con constantly, go to getting back to the first point, you can constantly listen uh, and, and you constantly follow what, uh, what is the cons customer reception and you adapt and you change and you constantly evolve. So it's not just a phase, it's continuous listening and continuous learning from the client. And then there is the final point from my point of view is probably a little bit tri trivial for, for designers, but it's, it's still something many companies need to understand. Design is more than a product. It's talk, we need to talk about experiences. We need to talk about customer journeys. So and it's not just a problem having the right product. The problem is to have the full journey right. And to get the full journey right, you need to change a lot of things inside of the organization. So given these four topics, we also built a little bit of recommendations. So for example, uh, uh, what does it mean building uh, a customer-centric vision? So you need to have leaders, you need to have the right metrics in place, and you need to use these metrics to push and to, to pressure on the C-suite, on the, on the board, on the leadership of the company. So yes, you see that I have an impact and I need to have more, I need to have more um, control on what I'm doing. Uh, the other point is about, uh, it's more than a department, which means that you need to create cross-functional teams, but you need to invest. And this is another key problem that later we're going to get back to this point. So design is not just, ne you need to believe and you need to invest in design. You need to provide the team the right tools, the right culture, and you need, the, you need to combine them with the rest of the organization. And when you're talking about continuous interaction, again, as I said before, this is really, really relevant for the software industry when you work in agile so it's normal to work in agile teams i see you're smiling so because i guess yeah the, the trend is now devops develop yeah exactly. exactly devops design ops uh, yeah it's continuous so you never stop it continues uh learning designing and testing and going back and learning design so this is it never stops so you need to let it roll and many companies they have the, this idea that design is just okay we start the brief then you deliver something and it's done this is the reason for example this kind of concept is really challenging the traditional agency model mm -hmm. i spent all of my life in an agency so i know very well it works so you never there when the project is launched you never there when you can collect the data and you can get on the, on the next iteration you can this works only when you are in, inside when you are an external agency, you can get the brief, you can deliver something, and then your job is done. So it's a completely different approach. And the final point is about the user experience. I think that the problem is you, the specification, the requirements, they never come from, uh, I don't know, from technology or from, yeah, there are also business requirements, but the, the requirements, they need to be prioritize listening to the customers, understanding who are the, the user, what is their experience. And this is also in my experience works very well, both for cast business to consumer experiences, which is, I would say, pretty intuitive, but it works very well also in internal when you're working in B2B or in what is called B2E. So you're building services and application for the people that are working inside. But they have, um, for this application, they are relevant for the customer experience. For example, the Salesforce applications. I'm not talking about the product. I'm talking about the application you have to deliver to the sales network mm -hmm. that they have to serve the client. To the application you give to the people that are on the call center, uh, you, you are interacting with on the phone. So all these applications are very important. So also the way they are designed, they, they have an impact on the customer experience. So as you can see, so if you can see, getting design right is not easy. There is not a magic formula. You need to combine all of them. I would say that the biggest challenge is a cultural challenge. It's way more than you know, uh, having the, the right software in place. It's, it's way more than having 
having a, a, um, also a design team is also to embed the design into the operating system of the company. So I would say there are two final recommendations. First of all, design alone is not enough. Design delivers business value only if design is within the rest of the organization, only if they are working together. And we need to, we, this, there, there's a point where we typically insist you need to invest on that. Design requires investment. Right. It's not just, again, it's not just putting three, four people in the room and, and it's done. You need to, it requires commitment and investment. And this is the reason why companies are struggling because you need to invest. And if you want to invest, you need to understand what is, what could be the, the, the um, the return of this investment. They want to measure the, the business impact, okay? So design is leadership. So it's something that should be also, this is not, so, yeah, there is also another point. So design mm -hmm. is not something that leaves in the middle management. Design should be a um, uh, top management priority. Then there is another part of the story. This is the part of the story I tell to designers. I tell also to myself, sometimes I have to challenge myself and my assumption as a designer, but uh, it's a two-way learning process. Design designers, if they want to have a business by impact, they have to learn to deal with the business people and to the business processes. So I spent all of my life in a design world in a design agencies, and I know the designers, they love to live in their own design bubble, which is cool. It's your comfort zone. You talk about cool things. It's catch. You, uh, you, play, you talk about phones. You talk about uh, all these kind of things that we love. You, you talk about how to craft a thing. But sometimes you have to get out of your bubble. You have to learn to speak with the people that are around you. You need to work with them. And you need to, be, to learn also to understand the business challenges that are behind the, the product you're designing. So, oh. Uh, okay, we lost the day. But at the end, actually, oh. we, are, we are at the end. I don't know what happened. <laughs> so something went wrong here. So let me let me let uh, me do the the reset. The, yeah, the reset thing that maybe can work. No. We can continue. Okay. Anyhow, we we yeah, are at the continue. end. Yeah. So uh, um, uh, so that is the story. So it's a two way it's it's a two way process. So on one side, we need to. The companies, they need really to, to get design right, but on the other side, they need, uh, or designer, they need to learn to, to, to deal with business, to build also to business challenges and topics, because, of course, you need to be able to understand what, is, what are the business challenges behind your products. And so, from a point of view, so designers, they need to be able to deliver design solution to business challenges. Very good. Okay. Thank uh, you. Uh, mid Maybe I can give a short example of our company, that's yep. the system. Um, we are developing solutions, software, and um, there are several phases in the software. There's, of course, the upstream thinking. When you sit down with a customer, you have technology, and you want to create a user experience that addresses a need. That's called the upstream thinking. This is uh, usually where the designer, the design takes place. But then what you need to do is to take this idea and to convert it into an architecture of a software. Uh, you need to engineer the data that you're going to manipulate. And if there are not designers at the second stage, then you lose the spirit. Then after this uh, engineering time, there is a sales and marketing. Today, the f when you go in a Tesla workshop, uh, in a, when you want to buy a Tesla, the first experience you have is you go inside the Tesla uh, dealer. And the first thing you see is this wall where you can customize your, your car. So the first uh, experience you have with what Tesla is producing is uh, the sales and marketing. So also in our sales and marketing, we have designers as well. And the last point is uh, the ownership. When someone is running a solution, like uh, the 3D experience, we need to constantly monitor, uh, monitor their feedback. This is why all our solutions today are running on the cloud, because the beauty of the cloud is you can instantaneously get the feedback of the user. Yeah. I can tell you I used to develop software on-premise, it took us maybe one year to get the first feedback. Now it takes one day. Well, yeah, Which, on. by the way, has released the, life cy the, the, the cycle time of development from, let's say, one year. You know, usually you do a release every year. 
to every two weeks. So every two weeks on the cloud, we are refreshing. And you have an instance of that because if uh, you come tomorrow, you'll see this, uh, the result of this hackathon. What is a hackathon? The hackathon we've put in the room five teams of five users, 25 users who are experiencing uh, what we just developed, you know, not yet on the market to get their feedback and to get their experiences. So I agree that constant monitoring of what the users are doing is critical. Yeah, you have to learn, uh, you have to learn. I, 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 let me tell you, as a designer, you have to challenge a lot of your assumption as a designer, too. Exactly. Uh, but at each stages, you have to, de to challenge the previous decisions. Yeah. So yeah. this is, a, yeah. maybe you call it agile. I don't like the word agile, but what? it's because uh, it it's a DevOps, meaning you develop the software, mm -hmm. you monitor the operation, you get the data out of the operation, and you put it back in the development. This is, we call it in DASO system, we call it uh, the if we loop, the in, we are represented by the infinite sign. Ah, yes, actually, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, I don't know, this was, you know, um, our first, first attempt to uh, speak about design and business and to instantiate it in our company. Um, do you want to ask some questions, some of your concerns of, or, yeah? Yeah, I'm ah, sorry, probably yeah. you need, yeah, thank you. Um, I can continue it. Hello? Yeah, yeah, yeah you talked a lot about the, the benefits of, of talking to the public and the users and getting their feedback on, on design. Is, does, is there also an inherent danger in that as well? Because the public is not always right and the public is not always a maverick uh, uh, sensibility and, and they <laughs> quite often don't understand cutting edge design. Uh, is, 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 there, is there a danger to it as well, do you think? Well, this, okay, so designer, so designer, we, okay, we, as designer, we have two ways to listen to the public. The first one is go and do interviews and do research. And the second one is to simply analyze and see the usage data. So usage data, they don't lie. Interviews, they, they, they lie. And sometimes, they, hey, they tell you things that are not true. So uh, to do that, you need people that are kind of, you need a specific designer that are skilled and they're able to do interviews and collect insights. Of course, you don't, you don't translate literally also what the people tell you in a, in a product, but for example, going back to, to the, for instance, talking about the software, let's, let's talk about, I don't know, you, you, you see that, uh, I don't know, you're, you're the, the, banking, the, the banking application you have on your phone, and uh, I don't know, if you read the data, you understand that there is a specific feature that nobody uses, or there is a specific feature that you invested a lot, believe, you, you thought, okay, this is gonna change completely the experience and people, they don't use it, or they start to use it and then they drop. So you need to understand what's going on. And so of course, you, with, the, with the metrics, you understand there is a problem. And then you have to go there and you just don't ask them what they, but sometimes you just watch them, you do, what is called shadowing, you do observations, you try to understand what is wrong in the way they're using that product and, and, and in order to, to bring into the next agile yeah, exactly. sprint, loop. Uh, the loop, the next agile loop, uh, the, the insights in order to repair it. Uh, you relaunch it every, every, two we every two weeks and you see if something is going, is getting better, okay, that is good. If something is not getting better, probably we, we haven't found the right solution. But what is very important is this continuous listening. Of course, the listening doesn't mean that you get always things right. Sometimes you get things wrong. Sometimes, again, as I said before, sometimes you also have to challenge your assumption as a designer. Because as a designer, you tend to have a designer day by, uh, by, by nature, a very top-down approach, okay? So I do what I like. I know what is good. I know what is cool. And then uh, you try to, in a way, find a way to bring it to the, to the people. Uh, sometimes the people, they, they don't use it in the way you felt. And sometimes you have to challenge your assumption and uh, go back on your design decision. And maybe this is not working yes. the way it was supposed to work. Again, it's, it's, a, it's a bit, the, there is not, again, a magic formula. But listening to customer is very important because you, you learn a lot. Then, you, then the final, I would say, how to address the problem is again your call. You're a designer, you're still in charge, you're still there. So you design how to, the, to deal with the problem, but you need to know that there is a problem and you need to know what, uh, where the problem comes from. 
Thank you. Here's another one. Thank you very much for your talk. Um, as a comment, some of the presentation that you give uh, rings true to some of the insights from marketing people 15, 20 years ago. Yeah. It's, it's almost identical, actually, <laughs> um, in terms of how to get the priority and attention from leadership for your call. Um, my question is the, um, the iterations that you're talking about and the improving on the design, it seems to be driven very much from a digital focus, yeah. right? A user right. experience that's digital, it's easier to make those iterations. What about, um, what is your view on uh, the ability to actually change physical uh, surroundings, physical products, uh, particularly when you're monitoring using sensors, monitoring the usage of those things in a more digital way, but still you have to make changes in the physical um, design. Okay. Well, that's a very good question. It's a very nice topic. Uh, there is not one single answer, if I believe. There are different topics. For example, um, uh, is true. So digital is very, is, is very easy. So I, I work a lot also on services and, for example, retail spaces, um, bank branches, for example. And it's not like software. You can change the software every two weeks. Mm. But uh, with probably longer, I don't know, two every Sorry. every two months, every three months, you can rearrange the space. You have to design the space. You have upfront design the space in order to make it flexible, to allow sometimes level of flexibility in the way you define the layout and the way you um, you build the, all the fixtures and all the equipment inside. Then you put some sensor. You still you understand how people are using it. And then you can constantly follow and adapt. Uh, actually, many big uh, grocery store chains, they track consumers every, every second. They, they collect lots of data. And for example, they change the position of the products in the shelves. They, they do a lot of this kind of continuous alignment. Then it's true that, of course, the physical space has its own limits. You can't, but also, also, also digital. I mean, you don't, you don't change completely your application from a day from to day. another, mm. but maybe you can improve a feature or before adding a new feature, it takes longer. Um, nevertheless, I, I, I think that, uh, uh, so the, the, the space where, you, where we're gonna see this uh, topic getting very important is really in the space, in the service design and working on spaces and working on a complex situation where digital can have a lot of impact in the way you use the space, in the way you use uh, the furniture, and the way you interact with the sales people, with the people that are delivering the service to you. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I, I've uh, addressed the point, but, but definitely there is, there is an area where this, this digital concept is expanding into the real world. Mm -hmm. Of course, then at the end of the day, the table is a table. It's not easy to change it. But you can change the position of the table. We, you can change the way we are, we are talking when, when I'm getting a service. For example, we are in front or we are on the side. And we are looking at the same screen. We are looking to the different screen. So, so there are also services they have. This, this concept of continuously tweaking, adjusting, building, and learning is getting into the service space. If I, if, if I no, go ahead. Thank you for the speech, it was really nice. Um, we as the designers, we used to um, solve problems. We're always looking for the problems, we're looking for the solutions. We're looking for cool solutions, we're optimizing things. Uh, but my question is how you will tackle the use case or something to build up what is experienced by itself. Like it doesn't have a purpose to solve any issue. It doesn't have a purpose to uh, optimize things, it has a purpose just to serve joyfulness. Like, um, I'll give example as like gamification on some level. Not gamification particularly, but those kind of uh, use cases. Do you have some tips how to tackle these kind of things? Well, thank you for this question because uh, actually I believe that design is more than solving problem. Design is creating the condition for better experiences. So from a point of view, it's a different approach. So use, when you, when you, if you, only, if you say that design is only pro solving problem, is like you are saying, okay, design is patching up things, it's fixing up things, which is pretty much true when you talk about digital experiences. 
because technology it needs to be continuously improved and adapt, which is true. But in general, I do believe that design is, is not just about uh, uh, solving problems, it's to, create, to build and to create the proper condition to deliver the right human experience, whatever the experience it is. It could be a playful experience, it could be a fully emotional experience. Think about when you're, when you're watching a movie at the movie, at the movie theater. It's, there is not a problem to solve there, but you, you, so you have emotion, you have engagement, you have, you're involved, right? And so, I, I, so that is, from a picture, a very good definition of what, what can des design can do. It's not just about fixing problems, but it's also about thinking about f possible uh, future experiences, delivering the right experience. Yeah, it's interesting how to communicate those kind of things to the sea level people, like applying these kind of not measurable instantly things into the companies. I found it uh, by myself a bit troublesome. It's very, it's very hard to understand. So getting back to the topic of the retail space, retail space is a space where sometimes leaving the experience itself is part of your value proposition, right? If you think about a little comp a company that sits on the back of these phones, <laughs> or I don't know, <laughs> uh, they, are, they deliver a, a, an excellent uh, uh, re experience in the retail space, right? And, and, there are, and, and the world is filled out of stores where you basically go and visit them just for the sake of living the experience. Also, the salon and the mobile itself is a huge experience. There is no real business, immediate business value behind that, more than building, uh, building uh, brand value, delivering brand value, inspiring people, and getting people involved in, uh, in something that is bigger. And again, uh, so, Actually, this can be measured because at the end of the day, you see also the impact. So building a brand, building a brand that people love, building a brand, so it's a, it's a, it's, 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 it's a design challenge anyhow. Okay, thank you. Okay, oh, that's the last one. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Gianluca, really good talk. So a lot of companies are excited about design and you know, innovation and things like that, even traditional companies. And they also undertake initiatives like sprints and other things. But the <coughs> success ratio in real business is very low. You know, I think 80 to 70 to 80% fail. So what might be going wrong? What should, be, what should they be more aware of when they you know, take up these design slash innovation uh, initiatives? Thank you. Well, the last part of, of, the, of the speech is basically was about that. So it's a... Uh, so I get, as, uh, as I said before, many companies, they, uh, today lots of companies, they are in designer, also companies that are not traditionally used to work with designers uh, in many different uh, areas and sectors. And they are struggling because the problem is, uh, is to get them, in, in, to embed them into the, into the real business processes of the company. As I said before, you need, it's a cultural challenge. So design is not just a, a team that sits uh, aside from the rest of the organization, and design is not just is a phase. So people that you you call uh, because you need to do something in a specific moment of your product life cycle, and then the product uh, the product is is uh, is delivered and is done. So it's 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 I understand and I know very well that is a challenge for many companies. There are different companies that have different maturity level about design. So there are companies that they are they have a pretty they are already already pretty much mature and, and also from our research we show that they are getting a lot of good and positive results. Then you have companies that are less mature and companies they are really not mature at all. So they, they need to be, to, they need, you really need to take them by the end and with baby step, uh, help them to approach the problem and approach and deliver and, and, and also approach the, 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 the cultural change that is behind having a design inside. Okay, I think we're going to have to stop here. Gianluca, I think you applied uh, your uh, design method to this talk. <laughs> it was a well-designed talk, so thank you, thank very, you very much. I think he deserves some applause from you. Thank you. <laughs>